this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a smackdown between, well, the two flagship products available this year, uh, just about every country, too, and just about every carrier. Right here we have the HTC One, beautiful anodized aluminum, big selling point there, lovely looking. And here we have the Samsung Galaxy S4, a powerful dynasty, the Galaxy Dynasty, and of course, in shiny plastic, because that's what Samsung does. Not going to make a snarky comment about that there, but I am going to tell you that this is the hardest SmackDown I've ever done, and boy, you know I've done a lot of these. These guys are really neck and neck, and we're going to look at them now. So here they are, two flagship phones. They're available now, or in the case of the Galaxy S4, will soon be, depending on your carrier, out right now in the U.S. on AT&T and Sprint, at least in uh, reasonable numbers. I think inventory is still pretty good on launch weekend. Both priced around the same, uh, depending on your carrier, $199 or $249 both just about the same size as you can see both running Android Jelly Bean slight difference in the OS version we have 4.1.2 on the HTC One here versus 4.2.2 on the Galaxy S4 which is pretty cool not many phones are actually shipping with 4.2.2 beyond Nexus phones so neat to see so for the moment you got the latest and greatest but you know how it goes if you're getting carrier branded phones uh, at some point they're going to fall behind and you're going to sit there and wait for your OS upgrades and say why well, don't I have mine yet but for now that is what it is. Big differences in build materials. Of course, much has been made of this, uh, not just in reviews, but of course, HTC is marketing the fact that theirs is unibody aluminum, and it sure is a nice looking phone. That's high quality right there. Single unibody piece with some polycarbonate to fill in the seams injected into the phone. Feels as beautiful as, as you might imagine. Nice curve here, but a little bit of a straight line with, with a bit of a cant on it, so it stays in the hand pretty easily. I, I at least find this to be a pretty comfortable phone. Also, it looks gorgeous. It's right up there with the iPhone for the ooh quality factor, modern design, all that kind of stuff. 4.7 inch display, but still about the same size as the 5 inch Galaxy S4. How does Samsung do it? They are amazing. Samsung, on the other hand, here we have plastic, shiny plastic, very shiny plastic, fairly slippery plastic. The white one is not as glossy as the black one. The black one has a really interesting finish. It's like mirrored sunglasses, a very, very shiny, reflective, almost metallic finish to it. It's unusual looking. But, you know, I'm not going to pick on the plastic too much. The polycarbonate here, I think it's actually a nice looking phone. It does look a little different from the Samsung Galaxy S3 also. And they've straightened out the edges from the Galaxy S3, so you know what? The Galaxy S3 was just designed to fall out of your hand. This one here you've got something to grab on. It's, it's a very thin phone. It's a little thinner than the HTC because the HTC bows out a little bit in the center. My one complaint would be right here the lens actually sticks up a little bit so it's going to contact your desk first. It's more prone to scratching that way and picking up grime. Why am I not complaining so much about the polycarbonate here? It's really durable. I mean I've on many Samsung phones and you might think plastic isn't durable, but it actually is because it flexes a lot. And uh, sure, you can scratch this if you try real hard. If you carry this with keys in your pocket, don't do that, by the way. But overall, you can drop this guy. You can abuse this guy. It, it stands up pretty well. Now, the HTC One, on the other hand, I have not done this, but we've already seen videos on YouTube where people have taken keys and attacked the thing. Anodized aluminum is a very hard material, so this is actually pretty impervious to damage too. However, it is metal and like the iPhone, if you drop it on a corner, it can dent. You might ding the polished chamfer over here a bit. You know, with any phone, some damage is going to happen. So there it is. For obvious uh, beauty, I think the HEC wins in most people's eyes, but the Samsung, well, it's actually a very attractive looking phone and thinner and it feels nice in the hand. It's very curvy, but again, they got rid of the excessive curve on the side, so it stays in the hand a little better. Both quite a nice experience. Aesthetically, though, obviously, I think the HTC gets the win there. Now, some folks might say, who cares? You're going to keep it in the case anyway, and if you do keep it in the case, well, you know that's that's what you do, and you can take that for what it's worth. Me, personally, I actually carry my phones naked, all of them, even my iPhone 5, so I do appreciate the way the phone looks just as the phone. While we're talking about the overall design, uh, what, one thing I want to say is the buttons on neither of these guys is perfect. Here on the HTC One, we have two instead of the usual three capacitive buttons. If you've watched my full review, you know about that already. There is no menu button here, so it's up to software to to pop up a little bar over here if this, if it's not a modern Android application that has a built-in menuing system near the top. But what's annoying about these guys is they're a little bit numb to being touched. Sometimes you touch them 
and they react. Sometimes they don't. Could this be fixed with a software update? Maybe it could. I don't know. But So a little bit annoying there. On the Galaxy S4, on the other hand, we have our little Invisa buttons. They show up now. Backlighting is there. They are so easy to press by accident, though, in part because they're wildly sensitive capacitor buttons. And the same thing was true of the Galaxy S3. But also, they're very close to the edge. So just by handling the phone, say you hold it like that, oh my god, I've accidentally just touched on the back button. So neither is perfect there. In terms of the actual space of the bezel, you can see side by side. I know some people have said that the HTC has a real big top and bottom bezel, in part because those boom sound speakers are taking up space. But you can see it actually has a shorter bezel than the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now in terms of display quality, we're looking at them right now, both full HD displays, different stored sort of display technology here. As you know, HTC uses Super LCD displays, they're up to Super LCD 3. Gorgeous, gorgeous display, nice blacks, really good colors, fairly accurate colors too. Nothing is blown out of proportion there, not overly vibrant, but still pretty zingy. You can see the little boy's shirt there is quite lively colored. A bit brighter. LCDs are brighter than Super AMOLED displays. It's the nature of the display technology right now. Also, they use a little bit less power, so Samsung avoids driving this at maximum brightness. Interesting thing with the Samsung is if you run on auto bright, it's almost always going to be too dim indoors, but it'll allow for maximum brightness outdoors. If you put it on manual brightness, you're never going to get full brightness on the Samsung. Anyway, both full 1080p, still a pentile matrix on the Galaxy. And what does that mean? It means that it has an uneven subpixel arrangement, but they've evolved it quite a lot. It's really very interesting, and they've gotten those subpixels smaller, and they've changed the shapes of some of them. So the, the absolute resolution is actually improved over previous Super AMOLED displays. I never really used to like Super AMOLED displays. I wasn't a fan of the Galaxy S3 display at all, but this one is really lovely. I don't see any fringing around the text or any jaggies, those things that you expect from a Super AMOLED display. Really nice. Uh, the one thing about the Galaxy, say you're reading a book or you're looking at a web page with predominantly white background, black text, the whites don't get as white on the Galaxy S4. That's a weakness of Super AMOLED. I'll show you what I mean. So right now we have both of these running on automatic brightness, and you can see the difference. I've actually disabled adaptive brightness in, on the Samsung. It has this feature where it looks at the content and it dims down stuff, which means it typically dims down the whites. And you can see the difference much brighter, whiter whites going on here on the HTC, which is also running on auto brightness. So let's disable the auto brightness and just try to max it out. As I said, you don't get maximum brightness ever unless you're out running on auto brightness and are outdoors. Gets to be closer there, gets to be whiter. It's actually a slightly more neutral white, but it's still not as bright as the HTC. One thing that's been improved is you still get really high color saturation on Samsung's Super AMOLED display. Now there are several modes to choose from. In fact, movie mode is actually the closest to color accurate. There's another one that does Adobe Full RGB as a setting. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are used to Samsung phones and the way they really do accent the colors. So it really is a matter of personal taste there. Whether you want something that's a little bit more natural looking or you want something that looks better than life, but gee whiz, it's pretty. Both of these have very good cameras, but a very different way of going about things. Samsung does the traditional thing. They go with a 13 megapixel camera. Right now, that's the new high end for smartphones. And you can see right now, it's working on its autofocus right here. And I would say that autofocus is pretty good as long as lighting is good. Once you're talking about just only modest indoor lighting, I don't mean a nightclub. I mean, you're, in a, you're at home with your regular incandescent light bulbs. It can take longer to focus. And I've noticed that it does a better job if I tap and help it out there a little bit and then it calms down and gets it right. Right here you can see we have access to all of our modes. You've seen our full review so you know. So a lot of features there. HTC actually has a lot of the same kind of modes here. If you want to get to more settings, a couple more taps involved and then you've got all of your settings right here. In the end, in, day, in good daylit photos, this is the better camera because you get more detail. But you know what? The amazing thing is I, I took photos with both this and the HDC one outdoors in good lighting places, with lots of details, trees, leaves, things like that, flower petals. And even on my Thunderbolt 27 inch display running at very high resolution so I could blow them up to 100%, there, it's really close. So unless you're looking to print, or you need these, say, for professional reasons, you're actually taking this to use, say, as I would. I go to a trade show and I need to take a picture of a phone to make a post for you guys to read. 
then the Samsung's extra resolution and pixels are important there, but otherwise, for average folks who are uploading to Facebook, who are enjoying it on their phone, even just looking at it on a monitor, regular, say, 1600 by 900 monitor or 1920 by 1080, it's pretty darn close. And in low light, the HTC wins. So let's take a look at the HTC camera for a minute. So here we have our HTC camera. It's actually pretty calm. You see it's not doing that hunt focus thing, and everything is in focus and pretty sharp. I can tap to focus if I want to. And if I want to get to all those fancy color modes right here, there they are. Just about everything you want. This also has fisheye, this has vignetting, they both have that, they both have panorama mode. So in terms of features, there's a lot there. And if you want to get to all of your settings, you just tap here. And they both have HDR, both have self-timers, all these kinds of settings available in both. But this guy does much better in low light because of those larger pixels. It may be 4 megapixels, but very large sensor right there, so it lets more light in. Yes, you're going to get some noise if you're in a dark nightclub or a concert, but you're going to get that with any camera. But it's going to pick up more colors and more detail. So in the end, it really comes down to where you're going to use your camera most, and you know where you tend to use it. Are you often in really well-lit situations, say bright offices where there's a lot of fluorescent lighting, or outdoors in good light, well then the, the Samsung Galaxy S4 is the one for you. But if you tend to take pictures indoors in low lighting, maybe at night, at clubs, in your house with just a couple of incandescent lights, then the HTC wins. Aha, uh -huh. finally, here's a place where one phone really wins by a big margin. When it comes to audio quality from the built-in speakers, HTC's Boom Sound, which is their word for front-facing stereo speakers, pretty large size with Beats Audio, really wins. Amazing, rich, full sound. You just hear things that you don't hear on the Samsung Galaxy S4 with its more traditional rear-facing single speaker. Also, you can see how beautiful the screen is here, but both of these are going to look great for movies. Uh, where where the, the Galaxy S4 falters a little bit is just on reading text. When it comes to movies, it's also gorgeous, but let's listen to this. I've got nothing against your friends. I like your friends. Sounds like a laptop, doesn't it? Very good. And also beautiful looking. Now let's test the same thing out on the Galaxy S4. So here we are. I am not covering the speaker with my finger in the back, but it just doesn't sound nearly as good. Looks lovely though. Pleasing, bright. Color saturation is great. So visually the same, but if you're somebody who actually uses the built-in speakers, the HTC One really is going to win. Now, headphone audio out. Yes, the HTC One has its dedicated amplifier just for your headphone jack. There's two amplifiers, actually, one for your speakers, one for your headphone jack. And But they both sound very good. They both have very clean audio, very little noise, no hiss in the background. So pretty close there once you start using headphones. I give the HTC One a little bit of an edge, but it's pretty darn close. Of course, with the Samsung, you can actually have that video floating in a little player, or a little window, wherever you want while you're doing something else. You know, on a tablet, I think that's a really useful feature because you've got a big screen and it's more possible to actually be looking at an email while having your video floating. Smaller screens like this, mm, not so much. Speaking once more of screens, by the way, 5 inch versus 4.7 inch, close enough that when I use them, I'm not really conscious of the size difference. It's not like jumping from the iPhone to either one of these, the iPhone 5 that is, or going from either of these to the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 with this 5.5 inch display where you really notice the difference. When we talked about that floating video player, that gets into the very different philosophy in terms of the software that's put on these. Samsung's TouchWiz has been called over the top, and I would agree. They really just do all sorts of stuff with the UI here. They change the icons a little bit, make things a little bit cartoony, that's one thing. But So when you want to use that multi multitasking feature for any of these applications that are supported, you just drag it over here and put it where you want. And there it is. Now, nothing like that exists on the HTC. Do you find this useful? That's up to you. That's a feature that's available right here. Of course, there's a million more features with the Samsung. We have the air gesture thing. You can f flap your hand at it for certain applications only and it will scroll back and forth. That, that could be images in the gallery or pages in the internet web browser, not in the Chrome web browser, just the internet web browser. Again, HTC, minimalism, you can wave your hand at it till the cows come home. Nothing's going to happen there. And then Samsung even has something called smart scrolling. It watches your face, and so you can, you know, bobble head up and down there and try to get the page to scroll, and it kind of does work, but not really very well, and in the end, it's great for loosening up your neck, and that's about it. 
again, here, clean. For those of you who think the Nexus series of phones is really great, the UI hasn't been messed with much, it's just fast, it's pure, that's what you're getting right here. You can see how responsive this guy is. It's just, it doesn't slow down. It's nice. The big thing that they've done here is add Blink Feed to the home page, and that's kind of sort of like Flipboard, only more. You've got your social networking in here, you have news sources, all in one, keeps you up to date with stuff. You've also got the time, you've got the weather up there. I don't mind it much. By default, that's your dominant home screen. What happens when you hit home is you see that, but you can change it to make one of these the home. You can't get rid of that, though. But all in all, very fast, very responsive. Uh, in some ways, I think HTC's actually stripped things down a little too much. You swipe down here, and I really like Samsung phones and many other phones, too. You get access to quick settings up here, like your wireless radios and your volume, maybe your brightness. Nothing much going on over here. Nope, not at all. But Samsung, you swipe down, and here it is. Uh, one thing that's really cool is for notifications here, you can actually categorically remove some. So say it tells you you got an email. You don't want to be told about that again, but yeah, I do want to remember to set up my AV remote control. That stays there. But you can see also I've got access to a whole bunch of things. That multi-window feature that I showed you for multitasking, your mobile radios, all sorts of stuff. I find that very convenient. I don't have to put little shortcuts on my home screen to control my wireless radios or actually go down deep into settings. So that's something that I would say that's nice about TouchWiz. It also has a little sort of like create your own little scrapbook from, from the photos you've taken kind of application. And even if you're not using that, the funny thing is you take a bunch of pictures and it seems to be in the same location around the same time and it just pops up out of nowhere. And it says, hey, I'd like to create an album for you. And if you click OK, it, it shows you what it's done. So there's an awful lot running behind the scenes here, which can make, well, particularly purists, a little bit worried. We all know how Windows is with a million apps running in the background and processes. That said, for, for us, this guy has been very responsive. Launch an application, come back home. There, there's no lag there. Samsung's customized calendar you can see here, which is very different from HTC's treatment of the calendar. So again, here we have software up the wazoo, so to speak, and a, a lot of it's useful, some of it isn't so much, but it really depends on what you like. If you're a Samsung person and you're used to this kind of software, you're going to love it. If you're somebody who loves to play with lots of features, the Samsung is going to keep you entertained a lot longer. If you're more into purity and speed and a minimalist UI, this is what you're going to have here on the HTC One. I can't say that one is better than the other because it really depends on what you want. Speaking of that AV remote, both of them have that. You can control your home theater gear using these, and they both use software based on Peel, which is a pretty good product. Uh, amazing, given the, the similarity there that they actually diverge. Uh, both of these, I, I went through this setup, I told what I kind of liked, and you can see I have very different recommendations right here, and the HTC actually does a better job, because it starts out asking more of the right questions. It gives a list of about 20 TV shows and says, well, which of these do you actually like and want to watch? Here, at best, all it asks is what categories do you want. For example, news shows, talk shows, that's it. And it asks your age and your gender if you're willing to share that. And it pretty much makes some very cliche de decisions based on those answers. I mean, I don't want to watch Oprah just because I'm a woman. I'm sorry, but there it is. In terms of being able to control your AV gear and running up top here on your taskbar for quick access anytime, you've got that on both of these. And once you get them customized as to what you like, well, you know, then it becomes a more even deal. And both of these have favorites and have reminders and all that kind of thing, so it makes TV watching a little bit more easy and fun. In terms of calling, you can see two somewhat different approaches to doing the same thing. Here you have your standard buttons for accessing your logs, your favorites, your contacts. Here it's a scrolling little carousel of those things right there. You got a white dialer, you got a black dialer. None of that really matters too much. Buttons are a little bit bigger on the Samsung. I think they're perfectly large enough on either of these since they're huge screen phones. Call quality on both of these, really good. Some of the best that we've heard. Uh, incoming and outgoing voice, loud, clear, very nice, easy to understand, good dynamic range there. So pretty much a toss-up for call quality. Both of these are awesome in that respect. And they both play nicely with Bluetooth headsets and car kits in our tests as well. In terms of data speeds, we are looking at pretty much the same thing again here too. Both of these happen to be on AT&T, so we're testing them on the same no network, always a good thing. In terms of data speeds, uh, pretty similar. Samsung pulls ahead a little bit there. Again, both on AT&T's network. We're going to simultaneously run the test and we'll we're doing now, I'll tell you, reception on these is about equal. The metal on the HTC really isn't affecting reception any. And reception in terms of dB is just identical. 
And right now we're pulling down our cell tower here, sucking all the data, and it looks like the Samsung just wanted to pull ahead there. Isn't that interesting? I think the upload speeds picked up at the end there, maybe because this guy was done downloading. Anyway, let's look at the results we've had over the last couple of days. And you can see the Samsung tends to have a bit higher numbers. Now, all sorts of things can cause fluctuations in that, but since we've been running these side by side at the same time on the same network, I would say that Samsung always does tend to get that little extra oomph. In any case, all of these are way more bandwidth than most of us ever need. You can stream Netflix getting 7 megabit per second down. You don't really need 21. Now, if you use tethering a lot, uh, use these as mobile Wi Fi hotspots, then it does make a difference to a greater extent, but honestly, most people can surf on a 10 megabit c connection on their laptop and feel like they're getting pretty darn good speed there. Now in terms of performance, both of these are running that nice new Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 CPU, that's a quad core CPU, 1.7 gigahertz for the HTC, which is pretty much what we've seen most phones using these days that have that CPU. Samsung managed to get up to 1.9 gigahertz, that's set on synthetic benchmarks. They benchmark the same except for GL benchmark where this Samsung gets about seven to nine frames per second better on that particular synthetic benchmark. Otherwise, they're surprisingly similar. Experientially, they actually both feel quite quick. Again, we're not suffering any lag here in our Samsung, despite all of this software that's running here. Of course, when you have that much software, there is always the possibility that you're going to run into interactions with particular applications where you might get slowdowns because of compatibility issues or something like that. But as of right now, they both feel fast, they both feel responsive, they both have two gigs of RAM. So you're looking at pretty much the same stuff there. In terms of internal storage, the HTC does not have a micro SD card slot. Ah, oh, those of you who love removable storage are going to not be happy with that. But then again, there's millions and millions of iPhone users who have done just fine with just their internal storage. And hey, I, I think there's a lot of folks who be happy with that. As a result, 32 gigs is the lowest storage capacity because I know you can't expand that. Samsung Galaxy S4 is available at 16 gigs. Some carriers may offer a 32 gig version. Uh, the Samsung and the HTC are priced about the same, with the Samsung being 16 gig and the HTC being 32 gigs. Where internal storage is important is remember with Android 4.0 and up, you can only store applications on internal storage. And some games these days, popular game loft titles, for example, are often 2 gigs apiece. So if you're a gamer, Keep that in mind, you might want to hold out for the 32 gig version of the Samsung, or you might want to go for the HTC One instead. When it comes to battery life, here again is a draw. They really are both doing very well for us with LTE on and the same mix of use. We're getting about the same run times on these. Where the Samsung pulls ahead is it has a removable battery, 2600 milliamps versus 2300 sealed inside on the HTC One. Despite the lower milliamps, the HTC is actually running it just as long, and that's probably because the LCD is a little bit more efficient than the Super AMOLED display in terms of power consumption. Also, it does have 200 megahertz clocks slower CPU. But for those of you who want to be able to swap in a spare battery on the go, the Samsung is definitely more appealing. Now, with the HTC, you can get those accessory plug into the micro USB port battery packs, so it's not like you're absolutely dead in the water if you run out of battery power. You just need to carry an external battery pack rather than a spare battery that you pop inside your phone. This could be a little more versatile though, the Samsung, because you know how manufacturers make extended batteries, usually with a bigger back here, makes the phone thicker, but you can put a bigger battery in here. I'm sure that those will pop up pretty soon for the Galaxy S4. In terms of gaming performance, as you might guess, because the performance on synthetic benchmarks is so close, you're looking at pretty much the same experience. Yes, the Samsung does score some higher frame rates in GL Benchmark, but overall right now, there's no game that's really taxing as much as GL Benchmark taxes the, the phone. So both of them, great for gamers. One thing I will say is the HTC One is pretty neat when you're playing games because you'll hear things that you didn't hear before where a lot of games it just sounds like a lot of bang bang shoot shoot if it's a first person shooter or just engine noise. Like I was playing Real Racing 3 on the HTC One and I really heard the music soundtrack and it stood out in a way that it doesn't on any other phone. When you play games, these both get warm. Uh, interestingly, the HTC One with its aluminum back, you know, metal conducts heat, so you tend to feel it. It, it does get pretty, pretty warm right there to almost hot if you're playing a game for half an hour. You're not going to burn yourself on it, but you're going to get a sweaty palm. Well, the same thing happens with our Galaxy. It actually gets very warm in this area on the back, and the display itself actually gets warm too. And we've noticed some throttling occasionally when running benchmarks, particularly which can stress out the phone, and that's something that you do over and over again. Uh, the, the, Gam the Samsung Galaxy S4 throttled actually before the HTC One did. Imagine that.
So guys and gals, what do you think? You know, this is really a close race here, and it really is sort of like, do you like Ford or do you like Chevy? Do you like Mercedes or do you like BMW? They just are two approaches to doing the same thing, and they're both really very good. In part, it's going to depend, are you an HTC Sense kind of person, a minimalist person, or do you like a whole lot of features? Do you like super amulet and the bright, vibrant colors, or do you like your white whites and you spend a lot of time reading? That would be the HTC One. Uh, both of them really have very good cameras, which is miraculous since the HTC One has that 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera, but they can compete pretty well in many settings. Again, the Samsung is going to be better in bright light, the HTC One is going to be great for dark light photography. Both have great call quality. It's not an easy choice. Hopefully, after going through all these points, you know what's important to you and you say, oh, I like that or I don't like that for each of these phones, and you're a little bit closer to deciding. So that's our smackdown between the HTC One and the Samsung Galaxy S4, and in the end you can see it really is a matter of personal preference. Does design matter more to you in materials? Do you like a lot of software features? Do you like minimalism a lot? It's going to come down to that. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review of each of these smartphones, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.